Uh, my name is Marina Graumann, and um, I'm going to play the Concertmasse Solis of Heldenleben and uh, Missa in B minor.
Good. In the, in the, the main theme, I want to, it's, it's very good. Whatever the timing you use for the freedom of this, I need to have a little more sense of harmonically where it goes. So, that's always, I think it's like a, a pagiatura. So when it comes, you know, later on, Never, never too much on that note. Whatever the timing is there. Um, and that's throughout, however, the, however it works in terms of the rubato. Um, good. Just try to, the, and the first one I would play almost more semplice. So because there's so many things that are gonna happen. It's just the beginning of the story. And then, then we start to go somewhere. But the first is, she just, she's there suddenly. The, the uh, Frau Strauss is in the room, so to say. And then we start to have this, this just this story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, and even this could be, I think, simpler. Way, way too much, you know. Maybe on a later time, yes, but da, 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 just you know, just think think it's almost like a, a simple song, and then later on we can start to play around with it more. But a uh, next one, no. Yeah, sure. Um, here, the last one, I think it needs to be a little bit longer because it's, um, it's tied over to the next one. I think these can have a little more charm. But it's not simply short notes. If we, it's maybe the wrong character, wrong direction. Then you, you can do as you like. Can you play just the repeated F sharps? Yeah. Is it, is it slurred or is Yeah, I think the slur is good actually. Because otherwise, it's not a, not a good place to have an accent on the first D. It doesn't really matter which direction, but I think this, keep the slur. Needs more, uh, the gesture needs to be more like this, not, not simply. Yeah, a little charm to it. Yeah, little. Good, and the next thing, I don't understand the triplets. It's for me, it's too. But let them, but let them, but let them. Yeah, good, good. Okay, next. Yeah, here, you have more time for this than you think. Try to really play it out once, see. 
Yeah, yeah I, would, I would retake. Because if we go, it's not going to bounce. Maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have the time. Yeah. Yeah, and there, the gesture is great, but don't come off until you really get to the high E. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Uh. And then you can, or, but make sure you actually hear the note before we come off. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So actually, you know, less, there, a place like that, less movement is better. Rather than, if we do that, we're, it's risking too many things happening. Yeah, good. Yeah, and this is, you know, it's a weird thing that he writes here. But because it's tied over, uh, yeah, yeah, here. I, don't, I mean, of course, we, we have to stop playing the D at some point. But I wouldn't do, I wouldn't re-accent the next one. I would, you know. Because it's tied over. Don't point out to us that it's again the D. Try once resisting the urge to crescendo and get faster too early. Really, you let this linger for a long time. He doesn't mark anything. And now here, finally. But before that, it has to be this kind of everything stops. If I'm going to be very exact, this note needs to be much longer. Yeah. Yeah, and here. Can, it, can you get more crescendo, be a little more be crescendo there? I mean, I, it's all mezzo forte, but just in terms of sound quality. Because it, would, it sort of comes out of nowhere if we stay in. So. You can you can make it much more uncomfortable. Uh, really hold it until there's no option except to go further. And how is the orchestra going to know where to come in? It's too free. You know, they need a. They need to have a clear place to play this, the, the pizzicato there. So places like that need to be a little more 
organized, yeah? Here. So this is in tempo. Yeah. Because that's dangerous for that downbeat there. Keep that a little more together as one idea, and then afterwards we get freer. So. And then we can start our weird tang tangent going somewhere else. Yeah, it, 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 again, it's the same as the place before. Right before the orchestra entrance and right after need to be very clear. And then, it, but th those moments need to be absolutely programmed so it's, it's clear where they're gonna play. And it, because if we do, th then it's gonna be a disaster after that. <laughs> This is all very good. Just to think about, maybe you can imagine that these, the, the upper line and the lower line of moving notes, have a little more relationship to each other. Because the way I hear it right now, it's very separate. Yeah, so it could be. So they're really speaking to each other. If we stop too much in between them, it gets a little bit stuck, the whole passage. Can we try here? show with the bow a little of which is the important line. If we play, yeah, it's of course A and D string the whole time, but we want to hear which one is the actually important note. So I lean to that side. Just a little bit, so it's not exactly 50%, 50%, if that makes sense. This is too tricky, yeah. 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 Therefore, the, the, the intonation doesn't go up here. It's E flat. And this is, of course, if we do this fingering, which is fine, but you have to be very careful that we. The line and continues exactly from that E flat. Yeah, good. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. This one, I would have a little more forward motion um, so that when the orchestra comes roaring in, it has a reason for it, you know, that you did something before. <laughs> So it has a little bit of direction. And then the last thing before we go on to uh, the Bach, I don't understand this, this bar rhythmically. Um, yes, free, but still, bah, 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 they're, they're syncopation. So I need to somehow realize that. Otherwise, it seems quite random what the notes are, what, like when they come. Uh, just from here. Yeah, to me the first the, the the first one is long, right? And with the next, imagine that somebody's going to play that with you. The second note needs to be shorter. So whatever bowing, if you if you change, that's also okay. Yeah. tiny thing because of the, the this always sounds like an accent the down bow there so I would do because that's the, the figure right it's not so and he actually writes he actually writes that even we don't do it, but the but the ya pa pa pum, not ya pa pa pum. Just a little careful with that. Good, and then get the last line. Uh, Very important with the Heldenleben to have this freedom and and creativity, but to have really structured where uh, know exactly where you're going to have that rhythmic structure and control. So when it lets loose, which it does, it has a reason. You know, it's it's been building in a particular way, and then it goes somewhere. Because if we're too free, even right at the beginning. If it's too kind of amorphous, if it's too like that, then then the whole solo becomes a little without grounding. So we have to establish where we have the motives, and then you have your flights of fancy from there. And then it starts to really fit all together as a big portrait of, of his life. Good. just work out a little bit because we don't have much time. I think it's useful to practice this excerpt with actually almost no bowings, just kind of long bows, because we get a little bit always handicapped by all these things there. So, you know, if you just play, for example, this portion here. somehow starts to make sense in a different way than when we get stuck with this. Do you want to try from, from there? Just Yeah, good. And so under that long slur, have the real clarity of rhythm. In the left hand. Now, 
that's a little too triplety. Try original Boeing. Yeah, I, uh, I dump, uh, I, yeah. Good. Keep going. Good. There, I find you wait too much. Then you're already behind. Mm. You know, it's not much time afterwards. So we have a little more bow there. Good. And the, the other thing to watch under these slurs, that we don't hang on these, these ties too long. Always think um, uh, that you're going to go past it. So that's why it's useful to practice it under one bow, because we always get stuck with the chains. And then it, it can continue there. At the very, just the opening phrase there, can you play once more and have a very clear idea of the character difference between... Now here, I think is a little bit different, but I didn't quite know how different when you played it. Yeah, good. Good, good. And here, I would encourage you to make sure that you don't get stuck too much here. Yeah. You, you, know, you might want to explore more in the middle of the bow or even upper half because you get less and less real estate until there's nothing left. So it's a really tricky passage for that in any case. So um, yeah, so that we don't sort of get handicapped by the bowings here, that it's, you know, you can practice also just singing the, the excerpt and seeing how you're phrasing and how you're timing it. And then we have to make the bowings work um, to fit that, you know, that, that this is doing, or the tools to accomplish that. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Bravo. <laughs> yeah.